Before we start today, a little disclaimer. I went to a Yankee game a few days ago. They lost, if you were wondering. And I also lost my voice in the process. So, it's on its way back. I hope you can understand. But what is going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. I also have to apologize for my mangled upload schedule recently. I have a lot of stuff working behind the scenes for future videos you guys will see soon. Uh, but today, I put a poll up on my Instagram story. I haven't done one of these in forever. And surprisingly, you guys chose Babish's Chicago-style deep dish pizza. The great debate will forever rage on, A, if this is comparable to New York pizza, and B, if it's even pizza at all, which I will give my opinion on shortly. Either way, I'm open arms and welcoming to a normal, semi-simple recipe for today, so let's get right into this. If you would like to make a casserole, I mean a deep dish pizza, grab yourself some flour and San Marzano tomatoes, Parmesan cheese and cornmeal, extra virgin olive oil, water, vegetable oil, tomato paste, some fresh garlic, dried oregano, some crushed red pepper flakes and basil, some sugar, cream of tartar, a lemon, salt, active dry yeast, and a bunch of cheese. You know, ever since I was gifted this stand mixer, I really don't despise <laughs> making dough anymore. Uh, back in the day when I had to do every single dough recipe and pasta recipe by hand, it was a lot, but this thing is a savior. Really, the only challenging part is making sure your yeast is alive and not killing it with super hot water. Uh, but other than that, this comes together really easily. And it was also super crazy delicate and soft when I pulled it out. Just ensure that your stand mixer doesn't take a tumble when you do so. We're gonna let our dough rest for a minimum of an hour to 90 minutes to double in size. And in the meantime, we're gonna work on our tomato sauce. Now with this recipe and every other pizza sauce I have ever made, they make it abundantly clear that it's very important to use San Marzano whole tomatoes. These are the perfect level of acidity, sweetness. It's got pretty much everything you want in a pizza. I'm sure you can get away with some cheaper variations. But if you want the best quality stuff, supposedly, buy these. We are going to add a fair amount of spices, fresh onion and garlic. Also some sugar to neutralize the acidity and kind of metallic flavor that might come from that can. And once everything is prepped up, chopped, crushed, minced, what have you, <laughs> we're going to start sweating everything down in a pan. This one's actually also pretty unique because we cook this entire thing. A lot of pizza recipes, including Bon Appetit's version of their perfect pizza, does not cook the tomatoes. Personally, I actually disagree with BA a little bit. I think the sauce should be cooked, at least simmered for a few minutes to reduce the water, to let all the flavors and spices you add kind of mend together. Also, if you want to add fresh garlic and onion as opposed to powdered versions, you have to cook it. Like, you don't have a choice. Regardless, once everything was cooked down for 25 minutes, it got nice and thick and smelling amazing. We can put that to the side for a minute, grab our dough back out, and then try to form it in our cast iron skillet, which is the only place this dough is gonna see for the remainder of the recipe. Another unique and amazing tip that he says is that if you can't get the dough to form perfectly the first time around, let it sit for a while, let the gluten relax, and then just form it up to the sides of the pan however you like. We're getting so informational on this show. It used to be all about fancy edits and jump cuts, and now I'm just feeding you knowledge that I've sucked and... <laughs> that I have borrowed from people like Claire, Brad, Rie, Babish, all of them. To finish this monstrosity off today, load in as much cheese as you can handle, really. I ended up using all the mozzarella I had and most of the provolone, so heart attack incoming. You're gonna top this whole baby off with a healthy layer of your tomato sauce, a good sprinkling of our Parmesan cheese, and then just a little bit of a drizzle of our olive oil on the crust into a blazing hot 450 degree oven for at least a half hour. This smells amazing. The sauce and cheese looks amazing. I got myself a nice little piece, and it is time to try this out.
sorry, I'm watching the Yankees lose as we speak. One of my favorite things about uh, Babish in general, especially this video, is how he gets in those little like subtle digs at uh, Chicago or cuisine he disagrees with or doesn't love. Where we're going to begin coaxing it into the shape of a pizza, or at least what Chicago calls a pizza. I feel like I'm gonna be in the same boat as him. Um, there is a place for this. It's delicious because it's bread and sauce and cheese. In my opinion, it's not pizza. <laughs> Come on guys, something that thick cannot be called pizza. That's more like Domino's cheesy bread. <laughs> or like a casserole. The crust is good though. It's got a nice flavor, a nice crunch, chew. I don't know, I'll eat it. I'm just kind of indifferent about it. I'm also very obviously biased because I'm from New York. Um, it's good. I'll give it like a 7.4 but it's not better than New York pizza. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, smash a like on this. I would love to be able to tell you when I'm next gonna upload. I have no idea. I think I might just throw out my upload schedule and just post them when they're ready. So until that next time, I hope you have an amazing weekend. I will see you right back here soon. Peace. With the M, M without the A, D Put the burgers in my money, super lazy Try and make a meal tonight, they ain't pay me Try and supersize my life with my A-team Yeah, our style wasn't wavy, but we had a vision we could